So this is lecture six, and it's about what the U.S. federal government has done to lessen the harm of the severe COVID uh, pandemic recession that started uh, mid-March. Um, I have five things to cover. One is um, a uh, overview of the four pieces of legislation that responded quickly to, um, to the recession. The first one was at the beginning of March before we had the shelter in place orders um, placed in on March 16th. And that was Congress and the president realizing that hospitals would need extra funds to deal with the onslaught of patients. And so the first legislation was um, just a, a couple of billion dollars, $8 billion that went to hospitals. Now we already saw that Eileen Applebaum accused this legislation favoring for-profit hospitals at the expense of poor rural hospitals. So there's a distributional effect of all of these policies. I'm not going to bring out in this lecture, but it's very important to know that some critics, including myself, I've written on this, that some of this legislation had hidden little gift for billionaires, um, but that was probably because the Democrats had to compromise with the Republicans to get such an overall huge stimulus passed. So the main message is not those distributional effects, but the main message is that the government acted swiftly to replace all the income lost when 40% of those earning under $40,000 lost their jobs because of the shelter in place orders and because of the um, resulting fear and suppression of government demand because of the virus. Um, so what I've provided is a nice graphic illustrating all four pieces of legislation and what um, areas of the economy the now over $2 trillion package has provided. And this is just government discretionary policy, and it doesn't count all the automatic stabilizers that automatically um, were triggered, like food stamp benefits, Medicaid benefits, and all the people who retired on Social Security because they couldn't find a job. The second thing I want to point out, and this is the main um, part of the few minutes I have with you, is th the debate now about whether or not the unemployment insurance supplement should be extended into January. Um, on Jan on um, June 4th, that was the middle of last week, the Congressional Budget Office, um, which is a bipartisan group of experts that advise Congress about their economic activity, um, issued a report that said, what if we extend these $600 extra per week um, all the way into January? instead of them being expired in, at the end of July. So what if we extended these special unemployment benefits until January, uh, the end of January of 2021? And as we talked about last time, that will have two effects. The first effect it will have is to supercharge the economy by replacing most of the income of the people who lost their jobs. We did see that um, essential workers and remote workers um, on balance were higher income workers and many people in leisure and hospitality and care work lost their jobs. So on balance, the people that lost their jobs, the unpaid, were lower income people. Giving money to them boosted their income so much so, the CBO found out, that their consumption barely changed. I'm looking at my notes here. Their consumption of food, of rent, um, and other goods and services barely changed even though they lost their jobs, even though they lost their jobs. In most recessions, the unemployed get a fraction um, on unemployment than they get when, they're, um, when they were working, and they're very much encouraged to look for jobs even if the jobs really aren't there. But in this recession, Lower income people, five out of six of them are making the same or more than if they were working. And absolutely, that means that they're not so eager to go back to work. They may be counted as unemployed, but they're very unwilling to go back to work. First of all, there aren't the jobs there for them, and their kids are out of school, um, and they're paid 
just as much for not working. That can go on forever, but it's going to slow down their impetus to go back to work. No, uh, no problem. On the other hand, all that income is there generating demand for good goods and services. Um, if the unemployment benefits um, um, are still there, then the landlords um, then the landlords don't find a, a tenant that can't pay, and the landlords keep on, on, um, um, on consuming. So on balance, the CBO found out that the extension of unemployment insurance will help the economy in 2020, even though there is this negative effect of people not wanting to go to work. They found out though in 2021. Um, there, the suppression of labor supply, or as Ananya said, the reserve army would lower the level of goods and services, and um, and output won't be as high as it would as if as if the reserve army came into the labor force. So um, we we have to weigh the cost and benefits of that. But but mind you, we'll see a debate about whether or not to extend the unemployment insurance um, benefits. Um, the other um, point I, I want you to, to assess is that what the United States is doing is not very different than what um, the rest of the world is doing. There is an IMF report that I'm putting in the email and it's now in the, in the expanded syllabus. Take a look if you want. But if you want a comparison of what the U.S. is doing compared to um, the rest of the world, you'll see that we're not that much different. Basically, we're shoveling money into the pockets of unemployed um, people and into the institutions like airlines and like hospitals that are getting hard hurt, hit by this pandemic. This begs the question about how will this be paid for? Well, one, this um, increased deficit that in increases economic activity will pay partly for itself because the landlords who aren't defaulted and still get rental income will be able to pay their taxes. Um, the remotes and the essentials that still have their jobs and maybe even their pay went up will still pay their taxes. So there is some part of the government deficit used to stimulate an economy that pays for itself. However, we are in a bit of a problem, and the other countries weren't, is that we came into this recession with a 4.9% of GDP deficit already built in. That hardly ever happens, that you have a deficit building in a full employment economy. But the tax cuts put in by the Republicans in 2017 caused a huge deficit in a full employment economy. So we were a little bit hampered by not having a surplus um, coming into this recession. And in previous times when we've had different um, administrations, like under Clinton, when we had a full employment economy, there was a, a government surplus. It gave us more wiggle room for this de um, depression. Again, on Friday, we're going to talk about the effects of the, of the recession. Um, the other ways that we saw government policies that, um, um, respond to the recession is to shovel money to small businesses. Now, these are in the form of loans, but most of these loans are forgivable if the small businesses um, keep their employees employed, even if they don't do anything because there's really no demand. So that's the summary of what the government has tried to do in um, the bottom line is that the recession would be a lot worse, probably 40, 50 percent unemployment if we didn't have the government stimulus. Remember our spending and output graph. In 2019, we were in a happy place. We were at equilibrium, spending equals spending equal output, spending that was composed of consumption investment, government spending and net exports. We were in a happy place because not only was there equilibrium, we were at full employment. By 2020, that demand fell by a lot, not because government fell off the um, um, spending um, fell off the table, and not because we um, we didn't export very much. In fact, our net exports got a little bit better, but it was because consumer and investment demand 
fell into the basement. And we saw that um, just a few hours ago, the NBER has called the start of the recession in February, already by February, um, because of the worries of, of the pandemic and people were canceling their, their vacations. So now the question is, how much are we going to try to boost spending up to get back to this happy place of full employment? Um, again, we're going to have to rely on G. Thank you very much. See you um, tomorrow.